Guys, welcome to Fuel Your Drive. I'm your host, Josh York. And guys, let me tell you, today we have a beautiful, beautiful episode. And there's a reason why I said that would it be, but I'll get back to that. But at first, I want, to be t- I want to first tell everybody one thing. I've been trying to get my first, yes, this individual is my first female entrepreneur on Fuel Your Drive. So she's a special one, let me tell you. She's very special. And honestly, I got to tell you, I'm really excited because, you know, not only am I going to be following in her footsteps, but you're going to learn something, but I'm going to learn something. And I love learning. Now, let me tell you, our guest today, she brought a breakthrough drug to the market, literally changed the game for women, like drop a microphone. And the reason I say this is going to be a beautiful episode with a B, because she ended up selling her company for a billion dollars. So right off the bat, I have so much respect for this woman. I'm so excited. She looks unbelievable in pink. All she rocks is pink. She's also a New Yorker. So we're definitely going to vibe with the same energy. Guys, welcome to the show, Cindy Eckert. Cindy, welcome. Woo, Josh, I'm the first. You know I like first. I, listen, I knew you liked first. And I, honestly, I was, I was trying to figure out who I was going to bring on as the first female entrepreneur, because there are a lot of more male, male entrepreneurs out there, but I wanted to bring on the first, and I was trying to really be very strategic about it, because I'm connected with a lot of very successful females, but I was like, you know what? I like the fact that she rocks pink. I like her energy. She's super confident, and we're going to just crush this episode. So I was like, Cindy, yes. you have the honor. You're going to be the first female ever to be on Fuel Your Drive. All right. I love it. Love it. All right. So, 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 so let's get rocking and rolling. So you know, you've done some, some, some fantastic things. And, and honestly, you, you're an inspiration to myself because I'm going to be, there's no way fans or butts. I'm following in your footsteps. That's a fact. I, I run, you know, one of the fastest growing franchises right now in the world. We've literally disrupted the fitness industry. We bring the workout to you called Gym Guys. And in five years of franchising, we have over 250 locations. We're in 32 states, three countries, about to enter our next two countries. And you can't stop me. And I know you can't stop you. But let's kind of first, you know, talk about your story you know, how you got into this industry. I've done a lot of research on you. I know a lot of things and I'm really excited to to dive deep because there's going to be a lot of value here. I love it. You know, I actually started sort of by dumb luck. I mean, I went out of college. I was going to work for Fortune's Most Admired Business. Like that was the agenda. It could have been anything, Josh. Like it could have been in aerospace. It could have been in who knows what. At the time, it was a pharmaceutical company called Merck. So, you know, I like was one of thousands of resumes trying to get my foot in that door. I finally got in that door. And then I was like, what am I doing in a big company? Like I'm sitting here busting my ass, building value for other people. And I'm like not participating in the take really. And so I realized, you know, I'm not going to be content where I'm just a number. Like I'm somebody who wants to be heard. I want to make my mark. And so I chased innovation. I went to smaller companies and smaller companies. And then I finally felt like, you know, I had enough of a track record have proven it and maybe enough people in my contact list that I could go out and build it for myself. And I thought, I'm like, there's so many people like me. They're in these environments. They're really personally driven. So they're going to achieve, but they're like totally uninspired. So if I could go find those people, I could put them against a mission. What could we accomplish? And my first company was called Slate clean slate, do it on our own terms. I mean, literally, you know, I have a paper towel. It's got like eight things we were going to do. And, um, and it worked. I mean, it's not like it worked like this, like we did all of this and all of the pains of startup and you know it, like all the landmines I stepped on them, but like there was such satisfaction that even if it was a freaking mess, it was my mess and I got to clean it up and I got to set the direction. And so I built a company uh, with one of the, uh, it was at the time the only long acting testosterone treatment for men. There's a little pellet that goes under the surface of the skin. And, uh, and I'm in this space with, you know, male drugs. Can you imagine me in pink leading a male sexual health company? But I also, <laughs> look, here's a crazy pivot. So I'm, I'm running this business. I get out of the hardship of, you know, startup. I finally, my, my sales are starting to look like this. I've become the, the second most prescribed drug among urologists in four years. Like we rocked it. Wow. And I was like, yep, yeah, nope, I'm going Great. back to zero. Going to zero. And my board was like, you're doing what? And I said, I'm looking around. There are 26 drugs for men and not a single one for women. That math doesn't add up. That math does not add up. I've been watching commercials for 20 years about why sex matters for guys. And yet there's nothing for women. So I took profitable I went back to zero, 
and I started over again. And that's my crazy ride of Sprout, um, where I successfully got the first ever drug in the world approved for women's um, basically frustrating low libido. Woman wants some extra for a libido. Addy is the product for it. And, um, and that's the company I sold for a billion dollars. It's amazing. You know, it's so funny because, you know, people don't understand. It's funny because, you know, I had, you know, I started this, I was just a personal trainer, but obviously I always say, if you don't have a vision, you don't have anything and you got to really mm-hmm. see it. You got to believe it. And you got to just never, ever quit. Like you're going to step on, like sure. you said, tons of landmines. You're going to have tons of problems and it's going to get very uncomfortable. But I went from being same thing, very successful running my own little training business to start franchising. And I literally, I can't, well, you know, but the pain I went through from going from, you know, very high level to zero again. So, you know, I'm extremely confident. You, you are presented as the most confident person. I got to tell you, that's why I picked you because you just got this energy about yourself that look, I I just vibe off energy and I got a lot of energy. I don't drink coffee. I get up at three (laughs) and me either. I don't either. I don't drink coffee, which by I, the way, my, I have two big brothers and they bet me. They bet me I would drink coffee by the time I got out of college. And I want you to know, I like to win so much. I was like, I'll take that damn bet. And I still haven't drank a cup to this day. And my brothers have never given me the money, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I've never drank. I've never drank coffee ever. I never even tasted it. I just have no urge to it. I just run off natural energy. But like, Love you it. know, everyone knows my story. Like, you know, you got to, you got to have just the most craziest resilient mindset to be able to just like, and obviously confidence in yourself to be able to go from where you were successfully to zero again. So maybe touch on that a little bit because people, a lot of people have problems with that and they, they just don't have enough confidence in their self and they, they don't believe that they could do something great, you know? You know what? I will tell you too. So it's such a compliment to me. And I think confidence, especially with women, um, it gets this connotation of like, you know, sort of arrogance. Like I'm so, I'm so sure of myself. I'm so, I know I don't have the answers. Success doesn't come from having all the answers. It comes from having the courage. And, you know, the confidence is yep. really, honestly, it's competence. I know I'm capable. Like I know that when I walk into that room, I'm going to kill them with competence. They're going to underestimate me and we're going to go toe to toe on the data. And when I was sitting there, like it's not even a, Imagine there's 26 drugs for men. It's a $6 billion category globally, and there's nothing for women. That's a business opportunity. When everybody else is walking away, you run in because you've got the courage to take it on. And that was, and and by the way, once I did that, so once I started Sprout, it's science. Like science can be pretty boring, right? It's, you have to meet like, uh, you know, outcomes in clinical trials. They're blinded. They're placebo controlled. I did all that. I did all the work. I checked all the boxes and I submitted it. And, and Josh knows this. And I got rejected. I got rejected. Yeah. I'd done all the work. So I had gone from, from like, you know, <laughs> the big leagues of uh, this business I had built. I'd gone back down to zero. I'd had all the humbling of building it back up from scratch. And finally, I did everything right. And I basically got punched in the face because the FDA said no. And you know what? I had all the data. So here was my next pick yourself up. It was um, when they said no, I had a decision. Like that was the end of the company really, right? How was I going to go out and raise more money to go on when they told me no? But I made a bold move and I decided to dispute the FDA. I like to say taking on the government for women's sexual pleasure is the road less traveled. (laughs) But you know what? When you know, you know. You pivot out of necessity or out of knowing. 100%. 100%. It's so, so powerful what you just said. You know, it's just like, look, I, I've done a lot of research on you. And, you know, one story that I read that really stuck with me was, look, I, I um, in the early days of starting my business, I ate cans of tuna for four years. Oh, I yeah. swear to God, Same. Cindy, I can't even, I can't even look, I can't look at it. I like, honestly, I, I'll vomit. Like I can't, it, even the thought I'm talking about, it makes me nauseous. But I heard you ate rice for like over a year straight I just did. to save money for your business. And I was, and honestly, that was the, that was the kicker. I was like, She's going to be the first woman on the show. As yeah. soon as I heard that, <laughs> I was like, that's amazing. But you know, it's I like, had a place I would go with one buck. It was a buck a day. I would eat rice. A buck a day. That's, I would get a cup of white rice. That's freaking great. And then look, you go off and you sell your company for a billion dollars, which is unbelievable. Like people can't even like pronounce sometimes the word B. And you actually <laughs> went out there and actually did it, which is unbelievable. So like, talk about that. Like, how did you yeah. know, like, how are you smart enough to understand 
that you have to save everything because most people, every, everyone likes to impress people. And I always tell people mm-hmm. like, stop trying to impress people. Like be an eagle, fly alone and focus on yourself and believe in yourself. Don't listen to what everyone else got to say. And who cares if you want to get, you know, you can get nice things one day if you want, but why don't you focus on just doing what's important because you have to build a foundation. So how did you know that? You know what? I, I guess I knew I was going to play the long game. People play the short game. They play the short game, immediate gratification, yep. everything else. I don't know. I'm playing a long game. I've got a long time and I'm just going to put the work in to get to those outcomes. It is a trap to make decisions on the basis of popularity, right? And, we, and, and we're yep. human. Like we all want to be liked. We all want to please. But it is a mistake. You make decisions that you will respect in yourself. And as I chose these things, I knew, you know, hell, I had all the people, you can't do this, you don't know how to do this, you don't have the money to do this, all of that. And it was about like, what am I going to, you know, when I wake up in the morning, like, and I look in the mirror, what do I respect in terms of the choices that I make? You know, that's the, that's the thing of it is it's really how you got to live life and you got to play the long game. I got to tell you a story. So, you know, I, have a, I had a big exit and, um, and I have a, a financial uh, guy that I work with and he came to my office. And uh, it was last year. And he came in and he said, well, Cindy, uh, you drive the same car and you live in the same house. And then he looks at me and he goes, and I'm pretty sure you were wearing that the last time I saw you. <laughs> Started laughing. I mean, look, <laughs> I'm not saying if you want to earn and buy big things for yourself, you can do that for sure. But don't do it prematurely. Don't do it for someone else's validation. Validation yep. comes from within. Very true. And, and guys, I want you to learn something, what you just said, because I get a lot of questions all the time. Like, you know, what, you know, how long did it take you? You know, was it, was it what you predicted? Everyone's journey is different. You can't worry about that. Just work your butt off. Just don't work stop. Keep off. working every time, every time you get punched in the face, enjoy it because it's going to happen a lot. And if you want to be a leader that the one who wears the crown is always the heaviest and it's very, mm-hmm. very simple. But you can't worry about everyone else, you know, and, you know, I'm sure, obviously, and I know you're a good leader, but I tell people all the time, you got to be a good actor and an actress if you're a leader, because if you're surrounding yourself with other people and they're feeling your true emotions, if you're going through a challenging time, they've just lost all their confidence in you and you're done. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. So, you know, what has been a challenging time, you know, which I'm sure you've had many, but if you pick one throughout the years where like, you were like, oh my God, my back's against the wall. What am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this? I'm, I'm going back. I'm going to tell you when I did all the work and I really had the, the, it was an obvious yes for the drug to be approved. And I got a no, holy shit. Like I got that on, it was a yeah. Friday afternoon. I got the word and I got to tell you, like I sat down and I, I didn't know what I was going to tell my team. I, I had literally had to go and tell them to all get working on their resumes because the company was dead. And that was like that moment of, okay, are you really, are you really going to let the story go this way on your watch? Are you going to let the story go this way? And what I was fighting for was not just myself, it was for all women to have a choice, which they deserved and the science supported. And so I went to my inbox and I read all these emails that women wrote me from all over the country. How lucky am I that people would actually reach out to me and they would tell me like, Cindy, I'm losing my marriage over this. Like, I feel terrible about myself. I'm successful, but not at this rate. And, um, and I woke up on Monday morning and I walked in and I think all the companies stood there looking for what I was going to say. And I said, guess what? We're going to fight the government. And that you make love those it. choices, so. right? You've got to make That's the choice. Fantastic. If you've got that conviction, like in, in your heart, you know what you set out to do. You, you've looked down the line and you know where you're going. You know, you just don't compromise. I mean, you're going to get... You're, it, things are gonna, COVID came out of left field for all of us in our businesses, mine included. The founders that I work with, theirs included. And you know what? You, you got to see possibility where other people see limitation. There's always light in the dark. You just got to find it. You yes. know, I always like to give a scenario. You have, two pe- you have two people pulled over on the side of the road. You know, one person's crying. He's like, I don't know what to do. The other one gets out of the car, puts it in neutral, starts pushing the car. As he's pushing the car, someone sees him pushing the car and starts to help him. Why? Yeah. Because people like to help people who help themselves. Oh, I love and it. And that's what you have to do. You I know? love and, it. And, and I, wait, and I'm adding I, on to that. I got to tell you, I say this often. If you choose the road less traveled, 
The delight will be the people who come and walk next to you. That is the surprise. That's so, your analogy wow. is so right. That's, that's powerful. I like that. I really like that. You know, I, look, I do believe that, you know, everyone's childhood and every single, you know, scenario that happens in your life really builds who you are. Now, I had a very rough life growing up. I don't know about you. I didn't get really deep into it, but I, I do know you moved a lot. Yeah. So I want to ask you, do you think, because moving a lot can be very uncomfortable. And I always say, you have to do uncomfortable things if you want to get comfortable. And again, going back to what I'm saying, not to keep saying this, but you're a very confident person. And, and regardless, even if you sold for whatever you sold for, it doesn't matter. You're confident and you can't just teach that. So do you yeah. believe that all the little steps that you've done, whether it was moving or little things that have happened over your years, have really been able to build that level of confidence? Because I'm sure at, at a young age, a lot of that was very uncomfortable for you. Oh, I think it's huge. Like so foundational. You know that at the time, like I'm a kid, every time I moved every year from the fourth grade through my senior year of high school, every year I changed schools. And I went kicking and screaming because at that age, you're all like, you finally have your friend group and, and then you're like yanked back out and you're the super uncool kid standing on the sidelines trying to figure it out. And actually getting comfortable with being uncomfortable made all the difference for me in entrepreneurship. I had a very, you know, I have a great and loving family. I'm very fortunate in that regard, but I had a you know, pretty unstable childhood. And then it's like you flex that muscle right? You're constantly flexing that muscle. I still force yep. myself to do things that are uncomfortable. Like it'd be easier to say like, nah, I don't want to do that. Like if, as soon as you say you don't want to do it, make yourself go do it. Make yourself go do it. You have to, you know, it's funny. I, you know, I speak often and uh, I was speaking at an event before this happened, oh, a couple thousand people. And to this day, I still get anxiety. I always get anxiety and no one would ever know that. And I usually don't share that, but I'm telling you right now, but it doesn't matter. Cause once I start going, I'm, I'm good. But you just have to do it. You just you just you. do it. There's like no ifs, ands, or buts. You just do it, you know? And, um, you know, one thing I've been dreading, I don't know if you would ever do this or if you have, but I'm like so scared of heights and I'm going to jump out of an airplane because I feel like I have to do it. I yeah. feel like I yeah. just have to yeah. because I feel like I just like need to like conquer the fear and just yes. do it. So I'm going to. But, I love uh, it. I got to gotta figure it out. Maybe we'll do it together. I don't know. I but anyway. Oh my God, that'd but, be amazing. Only if you'll wear a completely pink costume. Like a pink head to the helmet. Would, I, would put the, I, I would put the pink wig. I would go full blown pink. I'd go all I out. I look beautiful in pink, by the way. Beautiful. That's absolutely great. beautiful. But so, <laughs> so, so let, let's talk about like, you know, um, I want to circle back to that story of obviously, you know, you know, fighting the government. Let's talk about risks, right? Because yeah. people don't understand how important it is and how, you know, calculated you have to be when you take risks. And, and again, you're going to WTF, right? You must be willing of to fail. Course. You're going to fail no matter what. And that's a good thing. But what is your advice on people taking risks and how do they know it's right? Cause I know, I know you and I know the answer to this, but like, what would be your recommendation so people can get some, some knowledge out of that? Honestly, it's so simple. You're not going to know whether or not it's right. So the answer is what's the worst that could happen. And actually even more so what's the risk if I don't take it, this is about playing the long game, right? This is short term versus long term. If I'm worried about everything like short term and that payoff, you're going to look back like you're going to cost yourself so much in the long term. So the answer is the riskiest thing is, is the riskiest thing is boring. The riskiest thing is sticking to the, just in the safe zone. The risk is where the payoff is, everybody. You got to take the swing. What is, again, like what's the worst that can happen? I talk to people all the time who, you know, they want to be like us, start a business, but they're like, oh, but I, ugh, I can't, I'm scared. And I'm like, you can always go back. Nobody can ever take away from you the things that you have already done in your life. That's your backup plan. The yep. path you've already walked is the backup plan. Take the swing. What would you say? I'm curious if your answer would be the same. You know, it's very similar. Um, I, people like to say, ready, aim, fire. I fire yeah. and ready. I've always been doing that. <laughs> I, I, Cindy, I, 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 I can tell you crazy stories of things I've done to close deals. Like I was trying to close a big deal a long time ago people were they lived in florida and um i just randomly called them up and it's so funny i'm gonna be there tomorrow oh great you can stop by cindy i didn't even have a ticket booked i booked it that of second course. got on the flight closed the deal you know i always commit and i figure it out after you could always figure it out but you gotta yep. commit you got you, i always say you got a ta take action and you know what that is how you get things done it's very simple it and you know like you know from my perspective like 
you know, I think some people would, would be probably even a little like nervous to reach out to you because of your success. Like, I'm not nervous. I just felt like we were going to connect like crazy. And, you know, you know, I'm, I'm saying this for a reason because sometimes you just got to show up and just ask, right? That's just that simple. Please, like, please. It's just I, it's people, serious. it's amazing to me. And actually we've got so much more access today. Like there's so much more access today than when I started and social and everything else. If you don't ask, you don't get. And actually, you will be surprised that if you ask somebody something specific for help, that they'll answer it. I mean, I've hired people who've DM'd me. People are like, no, you didn't. I'm like, yeah, what? yes, I read it all. I mean, I'm reading this. Me and too. those are the people I read everything. who are taking, right? They're, if, they're, if you are bold enough to go out and say, like, this is what I want. Will you help me? I'm probably going to say yes, because I'm going to be intrigued by the fact that you are, as you would say, taking action. That's the person I want, 100%. not the person like waiting to be invited. Like, go take it. I did it. I'll have to tell you a story. Um, so I was, you know, when I was on this path uh, to get this drug approved, and it was, you know, I didn't have, I was a small company. Like, I didn't have, you know, people in D.C. and everything else. And I, got, I literally snuck in the back door of an event. Like I found out an event was happening. And I'm like, I love it. I gotta be. In I love room. that. Love that. I gotta be. I'm like somebody prop. Like I'm gonna go in the back door. Like I'm gonna pretend I'm the third. I don't care. And I got in that room. I knew nobody, but I was just going blah, 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 just like as fast as I can. And of course, you know, it's maybe a little rude because when I would get in a conversation with people, I'd be like, Hi, so nice to meet you. I, oh, can I tell you about what I'm doing? And I just took the swing, right? So I told this one oh, woman. Yeah. I walk into a circle. And there's a circle of women and they say, oh, you know, this woman has the coolest job. And I'm like, really? Because I want to tell you what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> just going. And they, and so this woman, like the woman who had the coolest job in the room was watching me. And I'm like, I'm going to do this and this. And she said, can you come over here for a second? I said, sure. She takes a card. I did not know this was who this was. She takes a card out of her purse and she says, I'm with the White House. Will you come brief us on what you're doing? And I literally literally the next week I'm standing on freaking Pennsylvania Avenue ringing a bell like, hi, I have an appointment today here at the White House. <laughs> it was amazing. And, and he, if I hadn't that, knocked in the back door, that wouldn't have happened. That is so inspirational. I'm going to share a story that's very similar to this. This is a, this is a couple hundred thousand dollar deal I closed. I cased about five, six coffee shops for days. Cindy, I didn't sleep for like almost 48 hours. I knew I, I, this, this, now again, please listen to what I'm saying because I don't want you to be psychotic because I'm not psychotic, <laughs> but this is very calculated. I was trying to get in touch with this reporter. Okay. I would literally park my car and wait for them to come in and start just observing. And every day they had a cup of coffee from Duncan every day. So I was like, all right, well, the chances are they probably pick it up on the way to coming into work. So let me look at the area and let me figure out where they are. And for days, like, Cindy, it was crazy. Like, I didn't sleep. Now, most people wouldn't do that because that's uncomfortable. They want to be right. tucked in their bed. But to sacrifice okay. a couple of days for high levels of success, oh, I'm down. So there she is one day. She gets a coffee. I'm like, oh, my God. I ran in as soon as she left, found out what kind of coffee she had. The next day, I was waiting there oh, with a coffee. Oh, I love this. And she loved it. She connected me with who I needed to connect with. I closed that deal. It was like a, it was like a couple hundred thousand dollar deal. It was a huge deal. And I always share that story. And that's why I love that story because you just got to do it. But see, you're bold. You're, 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 listen, you're a badass chick. I got to tell you, you are freaking <laughs> awesome. You just, you just take action, you get it done. And that's what you have to do. But you know, the people who are listening to this right now probably think, oh, Cindy's always like this. That's a personality. No, I can guarantee. No, there's no way. You have built yourself to be this because you've learned, you've built your confidence from trial and error and failing. Yes, and of that's what people have to understand. Exactly. Listen, people got to understand I, that. But they do. No, never, never give yourself that excuse. Never give your, yourself that yep. excuse that she was just born this way. Hell, I was born. I didn't, I wasn't born knowing how to build a billion dollar company, but you know what I did is I bet on myself and all, everybody who's listening here can bet on yourself. My, I'm like you, my knees are still shaking. My palms are sweaty, right? I sound like a song before yep. I go yep. on stage. I'm still, I still get nervous. I'm so keenly aware that I don't have all the answers. And you know what? That's what makes life great. Because how boring would it be if I woke up tomorrow and thought I knew everything? Like I'm constantly learning. And I find the most successful people are insatiably curious and they're willing to take the swing. They're really willing. I had a reporter story too, where um, actually yep. there was an article being written. And you know, when I was doing this, 
if people have an interesting reaction around female sexuality. Um, and uh, to the extent that I got death threats and stuff, it really did rile some people up. And so there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I caught wind that this reporter was actually going to do a terrible story. And she'd been calling around to some of the you know, thought leaders in the field and everything else. So I picked up the phone and I called the reporter and I said, are you going to give me a shot? Are you even going to ask me? And she was like, so taken aback by that, that she said, yeah, I'll ask you. And we went yep. through this whole conversation and she, at the end of the conversation, she's like, geez, like, I kind of feel like a jerk. I said, great. Will you write that in your story? <laughs> she said, no, <laughs> but I will publish the truth because now I know it. And you know, it's really, you, you gotta just, what, again, what's the worst that could have happened? She hung up on me. She wrote in the yeah, story that, the that I'm like super aggressive. Oh, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. Who cares? But I had the chance to change her mind. It's great. I'm going to share a story because you just reminded me of one that I did. I was on recently on CNBC. And I wanted to, you know, you know, look, I like you pivot or you die. It's very simple. And um, mm -hmm. I like to compare this. I take an ice bath every day. I love my ice bath. It's very beneficial mm -hmm. for you. 30 degrees. I'm very into fitness. But when you initially go in there, Cindy, you're like, because it's freezing, yeah. right? But then my mind, my mind kicks in. My body becomes almost numb and I adapt. What happened with this whole virus is people continuously kept the whew, why I did that for one second and quickly changed, right. switched, changed right. the website over, switched out, changed keywords, everything. And I started, I'm, and again, you said, you said it, right? There's so much more access to things you could put out today. So I started making a crazy video. How you doing? My name's Josh York. I'm from Gym Guys. Are you feeling my energy? I made this crazy video, <laughs> sent it to like 30 reporters that I just pulled off of literally Instagram. Four responded, your energy is infectious. Let's do the story. Put the story out. We got 32 franchise leads. So Amazing. What, did, what did I do? I took action. Some people just can't move from one side of the street to the other because it's too much of an effort. If you don't put the effort in, you're not, you're, you're, you're not going to sell your company for $10 million. You know? So you have, to put, you, have to, you have to put the work in. But, um, so my last question I want to ask you, and uh, I love asking this question. If you were doing this interview, Cindy, what's the yep. question you would have asked? Oh, dang. Um, what would I have asked? I would have asked, how'd you get a billion? How'd you get a billion? Yeah. I'm throwing one out there. Well, look. Because I'm, I'm going to yeah. tell you guys. So I got an offer. My first offer was $200 million. Um, They came and presented it to me. They were so, like, formal and proud of themselves. And it, it listen, that's exceptionally flattering that somebody would take your business. Uh, but I told my whole team, they got up, they left the room for us to think about it. When they walked back in the room, I said to everybody, five minutes, get up and walk out of the room. I said my piece, I said, thank you so much. We're incredibly flattered. We're gonna go it alone. Thank you. And we all got up and walked out and they were so offended. They were like, what? <laughs> um, so the next offer, uh, they called me back. And by the way, I did a little thing that's a trick for all of you guys in negotiation. I left something in the room. And it's so funny because a woman that worked with me, a lawyer, was like, Cindy, Cindy. She's like pointing to this thing I left. And I was like, leave it, leave it, leave it. Because it was purposeful because I gave them a face save to call me back. So they called me back. I knew the call would come. I left a binder, like a binder full of press that I had made for them. I'm like, that is look genius. at all this press. I love that. Look at all this press. So she, it's, the funniest part is her expression because she keeps trying to point it to me. And I'm like, I'm sending her the like, please. It's on purpose. Um, so we walk out. They've got a face save. They get an opportunity to call me back. And they're like, hey, Cindy, we have a binder for you. And I'm like, oh, no, please. It's, you're, you're welcome to keep it. But it kept the dialogue going. And my ballsiest move ever is they said, okay, it's $900 million. I said, that doesn't have a B on the end of it. Thank you so much. And I hung up the phone. And I walked out. And I actually thought the rest of my team was going to cry. They were like, do you know what you just did? But let me just tell you guys, that's not really just swagger. That is because I, know, I knew what it was worth. I understood the data. I wasn't going to sell myself short. And in every aspect of your life, whether it be in your business or personal, never sell yourself short. Never. That is the greatest story. That is, a, Cindy, that is the greatest story ever. I love that. And let me tell you, think about that. You, you turned down $900 million. That is like the craziest thing I've ever heard. Like that is... Like, again, this is why, everyone, Cindy is my first female entrepreneur on this show, and no one's ever going to top this episode. I highly doubt it. Like, that was awesome. <laughs> like, that was so awesome. Well, listen, 
today. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence. And one thing I also want to add, guys, if you pay attention, I always say ABB, always be branding. This woman is always rocking pink. I love it. Like, she's so on point. But, Cindy, where can you, everyone find out more information about you? Where can they find you? Let them know. Please follow me at Cindy Pink CEO, and you can follow my work in the Pink Evader at thepinkfeeling.com. I'm crashing it every day. I love it. Cindy, thank you again so much for blessing us with your presence. Guys, until next time, I'm really, I'm really, really happy you guys uh, tuned in, and I'm sure you enjoyed this episode because it was fantastic. Until next time, fuel your drive.